Minister Marvin Gonzalez, Minister of Public Utilities, Minister Faris al -Rawi, Minister of Local Government and Rural Development, Minister Rohan Sinanan, Minister of Works and Transport, and Minister Fitzgerald Hines, Minister of National Security. As you know, uh, Trinidad and Tobago has been uh, experiencing uh, severe weather conditions for the last few days, and while we have seen an improvement in those conditions, today, of course, the um, there is still an impact of water running into our water courses and, of course, the, the impact of that on communities. Here to speak to you today about what has been happening up to this, this point and, of course, what the plans are going forward are uh, our panel of ministers. I would like to start immediately with Minister al Rawi, who is taking the lead, as always, in these situations. Minister, um, let's start with you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, members of the media. Thanks for joining us. So we are on day four um, of a significant amount of um, work. Let's just put this into context to remind people where we came from. Since Thursday of last week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, now we're on Tuesday, so we're into six days of preparation, but four days of certain weather alerts. We're on Riverine flood alert number four. That is at orange level. Orange level means that there's severe impact as a result of rivers and riverines or riverines overflowing. We went from orange um, alerts for the systems above us, the rain clouds. Now we're into green. So we progressed from yellow to orange in the skies above us. We went from yellow to orange in the rivers and the outflow. We're back to green on the skies above us. And we're still at orange level, significant damage for rivers and riverines. We have low tide at, we had low tide at 2.19 p.m. So this afternoon, at 2.19 p.m., we had low tide. We have high tide coming in at 8.41 p.m. Um, everybody um, will by now have received a significant input coming from the Ministry of Works and Transport. We've been bulleting the fact that we have had a significant um, cause for traffic along our roadways. Minister Sinan will speak to that in a moment. But that has been caused because the El Carmen Carini River overtopped its banks. We are also looking at the North Oropooch River at 80% capacity now, and Carini Bamboo Settlement Number 3 went to 100% and more, and is now back down to 83%. In short, the water levels are so significant after six days of continuous and heavy rainfall that we are waterlogged. The Prime Minister has been managing this team of ministers and putting us into position. And in looking at the aerial view of Trinidad, right now, Minister Sinan and I having come from various parts on the field, as our colleagues have been elsewhere, but we can tell you in areas including bamboo settlement, in particular, what we can tell you is that the waters are up to 10 feet high in the river embankment areas and the rivers are overflowing and were overflowing. When that crossed into the Carony Plain and you look at the Carony River itself, it was so high that it breached onto the highway causing gridlock. As we traverse the pathways from Port of Spain straight through to the Carony River, east-west corridor coming, there was gridlock traffic and there is still significant traffic simply because even though the rain has stopped and did not get heavy rainfall today, the water levels were so high that the Carony River breached its bank. In particular, we took the opportunity today to go onto the field and I'm going to come to the field assessment in a second. But we can tell you that we're still treating with 11 out of 14 corporations with significant events. In total, 126 flooded areas. Only 41 of them are in, re are in retreat right now. We're treating with total landslips of 141 landslips with 52 um, into repair. 
Now remember, these 141 are the major land, landslips that we're talking about, not the minor landslips. In terms of downed power lines that are still under repair, there are five of them. Damaged wasser lines, two of them. Today alone, we've had 5,804 sandbags, 50 mattresses, 32 coverings, and we confirm that the number of people evacuated are 42. If we step away from the activities in major flooding, and I'll come through each of the municipal corporations in a short event, I can tell you that each of us ministers went out onto the field to do physical assessments for ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, we saw a significant effect to people. There are some areas that are literally in a disaster state where water is up to 10, 8, 6 feet. There are people in extreme distress and alongside that kind of activity which we found in Mayaro and which we found in, for instance, Bamboo Number 2 and in Rail Springs where the water subsided somewhat, in the middle of that tragedy, there was also a great amount of assistance and brotherly love and sisterly love because residents themselves were in pirogues, in boats, delivering hot meals right alongside the Coast Guard, right along the disaster management units, etc. And I'd like to, to take a moment to say, you will see clips of tragedy and sometimes you won't see the clips of immense generosity going alongside to the very many people that have lent a hand in this situation. We say thank you on behalf of all of us. We can tell you that we began this morning um, with the ODPM and the Engineering Battalion lending assistance in Mayaru. Somewhere close to 5 a.m. this morning, we were transporting linesmen into the cutoff areas in, um, in Mayaro. Minister Gonzalez will speak a little bit further on the TN Tech relief efforts. In Bamboo Number 2, where Minister Sinanan and I were as well, I can tell you that we were ferrying in, using the amphibious equipment in some cases, the linesmen to restore and re-energize. Minister Gonzalez will again come with the particulars on that. We can also let you know that in terms of the actual road ahead, <clears throat> we've had significant events along the north coast and along many residential or hilly areas. So Minister Sinanan will tell you about the state of access to Matlot, to Grand River, to Mayaro, etc. But putting this alongside, heavy water, so full that the Karani burst its banks, even though low tide was in effect, and at the same time, significant number of landslips and slides. So all along the North Coast. In fact, I just came back um, from Minister Hines having been there earlier, councillors having been there earlier, in Kokorit, in Lavantil itself, Breezy Hill, where it's a miracle that death didn't occur because there were huge boulders that came down off of the mountains. And I mean very large boulders. And we were lucky that we didn't have loss of life. In Kokorit, Many apartments stranded, homes split into two. So what we're seeing, ladies and gentlemen, put very simply is, we've had one of the wettest November periods. We're close to 200% more rainfall. Even though we didn't have a storm warning or a hurricane warning, what we had was six full days and four very heavy days of continuous rainfall. That kind of activity has resulted in a number of mountains and land slides and events, cut off and access to roads, major roads and archways. And even though we're at low tide, as we had this afternoon at 2 o'clock, even though we were at low tide, the Karani still burst its banks. And therefore, the areas associated with runoff, like the bamboo area, like Rail Spring area, those areas were up to 10 feet in water close to the river embankment. Now, I can tell you, and I wish to express my public and profound gratitude on behalf of Ministers Sinanan and I in particular, who interacted with um, residents in the Bamboo area. I can tell you to, the, to Imam um, Abdelaziz, I'd like to express our profound gratitude to you, sir, publicly because we were able to visit sites where breaches occurred. And Minister Sinanan will give you the particulars about 
80 feet of river embankment cleared away by a resident in the area. That is 80 feet of river embankment allowing for the full breach of the Karani River to happen. In that particular equation, the water got so high that the pump house at Bamboo Number 2 was under 10 feet of water and the pumps had to be turned off. Minister Sinanan, who has just gone to take an emergency call and hence I'm filling in at, at present, has arranged for auxiliary pumps to be brought on site. But the problem is that with the Karani River at full capacity, having breached its banks and in fact crossed the highway, reducing to one lane alone, moving the water out into the Karani River becomes a problem. So again, as Minister Sinanan rejoins us, um, I'm repeating the recount of actually getting to site at bamboo number two, watching the breaching of the riverbank by a resident in the neighborhood who cleared up to 80, 70 to 80 feet of river embankment, which Ms. Minister Sinanan would go into further details on. Let's get to relief now, because with riverine number four, at orange level, serious disaster, 200% more rainfall over a 30-year average. The Ministry of Social Development and the Ministry of um, Community Development have both kicked in. In the coordination with the disaster management units, I can tell you that the critical incident response system for the Ministry of Social Development has been triggered. I'd like honorable, uh, I'd like members of the public to pay attention to the following. People are eligible by way of application either through the disaster management units and in that regard we will have people come physically to site but also the portal is open at the ministry's website at www.social.gov.tt and the forms are available there to access the following grants. That is emergency food support up to $20,000 in funding for minor home repair. Thirdly, up to $15,000 for sanitary plumbing assistance. Fourthly, a clothing grant up to $1,000 per person. Fifthly, school supplies grant which amounts to $700 for primary school children and $1,000 for secondary school children. Sixthly, a grant to cover replacement of household items up to a maximum of $10,000. And lastly, counseling and psychological support from the Ministry's National Family Services. That's the Ministry of Social Development. The website is www.social.gov.tt. Now, in accessing these grants and positions, one has to qualify, and that means that a certain assessment has to be done to access the government assistance. The Ministry of Social Development runs that platform. You can contact the disaster management units, your counselors, your MPs, etc., and the portal is available. The Ministry of Community Development has a separate platform which involves self-help and other arrangements. If we move to um, the next couple of days, the stage that we are in from the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government and other agencies, that is WASA, in particular Ministry of Works and Transport, Ministry of National Security, in all of these equations, we'll be moving into clean-up assistance. So the phases are as follows. One, getting the water to subside, figuring out in some instances how to assist that, provided that the water course in which the water has to be pumped is such that it could take the water. Secondly, we then move into cleanup operations and to assessment of damages. Thirdly, we have to coordinate and will be coordinating any assistance that the government can lawfully provide for people who qualify. So those are the three stages. With the weather system having been put at green level, that is the waters above us, back to green um, status. The waters are still at orange level, that is major disaster point, um, significant damage point. We encourage people to first seek to protect as best as they can. The north coast 
and the mudslides and positions are running at the same time as the flooding is going because the water logging in the soil is very significant. Therefore, people should exercise caution in accessing the roadways, especially towards the north coast. For people who are stranded and cut off presently, be it in Grand Coover, be it in Matlot, be it in Mayaro, works are underway. Minister Sinanan will speak to that shortly. Please expect the um, assessment to run alongside the cleanup campaign. Please reach out and log on and make the applications yourselves. Um, I'll stop at this point, um, Simon, to allow my colleagues to give um, subsequent report, their reports, and then we can come to subsequent questioning at the same time. Sure, After, no sorry. Thank you very much, Faris. Let's move to the Minister of Public Utilities now to get an update from Wasa. Yes, yeah. Auntie Antec. Auntie so, Antec. good afternoon uh, to my cabinet colleagues at this table. Good afternoon, Trinidad and Tobago, and um, special good afternoon to the men, the hard-working men and women in the utility sector. Um, I wish to start by giving a snapshot on what the Meteorological Services uh, Division of the Ministry of Public Utilities um, has indicated in terms of the weather condition as we are experiencing at this point in time. The good news is that we expect good and settled conditions over the next 24 to 48 hours. We hope that with the increased sunshine activities, it will help the state agencies that are responsible for restoring Trinidad and Tobago to a sense of normalcy and to assist in cleanup operation. According to the Meteorological Services Division, sunshine and cloudy periods with isolated showers in some areas um, is expected. And we do not expect any major deluge of rainfall over the next 24 to 48 hours. But something of concern was brought to my attention right before I left the office to this news conference. A recently concluded Caribbean Climate Outlook Forum indicated that Bar in Barbados that it is pointing to above normal rainfall patterns in the region up to the end of February 2023. It is expected that we will have increased rainfall activity up until the end of February 2023. And that is because we continue to experience harsh El Nino and La Nina conditions. La Nina, which is what we are experiencing here in Trinidad and Tobago, is above normal rainfall activity, which is what we have experienced during this rainy season condition. And the Meteorological Services Division, in collaboration with their counterparts in the region and in the world, has indicated that in Trinidad and Tobago and in the Caribbean, we are expected to have above average rainfall activity up until February 2023. We expect to have dry, harsh, dry season conditions in March and April 2023, and again will be transitioning to rainy season conditions from May to June. I'm also advised that given the present circumstances with respect to the weather conditions around the world, the, meteorologic, the World Meteorological Office is expected to issue a very important notice at 7 a.m. pointing to continued and extreme drought conditions in some parts of the world and extreme flooding conditions as we are experiencing here in Trinidad and Tobago and other parts of the world. That means, ladies and gentlemen, we have to continue to be vigilant. We are not out of the woods as yet. We will continue to increase our vigilance and issue respective notices to our public so that we can be informed and take appropriate action to save lives, to save limb, to save property. The Water and Sewage Authority has done tremendous work over the last 24 hours to stabilize and to bring back into operation a number of our surface water sources that were out of operation as a result of turbid water conditions. As I indicated at yesterday's news conference, 16 water treatment plants were out of operation. I am pleased to advise that 13 of these plants were brought back into operation during the course of today, leaving 
just about three plants to come back into operation. Those three plants are the Komuto, the Quarry, and the Quora Water Treatment Facility. The Luango, Okono, Tompir, Matura, Aripo, and all the plants on the North Coast facilities except Lafinet were returned to full service. With respect to Cora, they're experiencing some electrical equipment which they intend to address over the next 24 hours and we expect that plant to come back into operation. With respect to the Quarry water treatment plant which is located in the Valencia area, that area and the river continues to be impacted by landslips as well as turbid water levels. We expect that over the next 24 hours the water in the quarry water treatment plant area will return to a semblance of normalcy where we expect that plant to be returned to full service. I'm also happy to report that the North Oropooch water treatment facility has increased water production to the tune of 17 imperial million gallons of water um, per day. In the quarry area, I am advised that work is continuing overnight to ensure the full repair of three major water distribution and transmission lines and we expect that by 9 a.m. once the work proceeds unimpeded that by 9 a.m. tomorrow that plant will return to full operation. As it relates to the Trinidad Tobago Electricity Commission I'm also pleased to report that the Commission has done tremendous work over the last 24 hours to stabilize and to return electricity supply to a number of affected communities. However, the Commission is continues to be um, disadvantaged by some areas due to a lack of accessibility and rising flood waters and accessibility as a result of landslips. As a result of that, a couple of communities, a number of communities are still out of an electricity supply and as soon as flood waters recede the, and it is safe for the hard-working men and women of the Commission to venture, those communities will see a return on to their full electricity supply. And I will read out a number of those communities that continue to be impacted by this condition. The Nabi Road, Bamboo Number 2, um, crews were dispatched, but again, unable to access because of the rising flood water in the bamboo area. In Manzanilla Main Road, Manzanilla, there are number there are approximately 20 homes without electricity and the Trinidad Tobago Electricity Commission, their crews, they continue to await the receding of floodwaters in order to access this particular community and to have the 20 impacted homes return to their or rather get their electricity supply. <coughs> In Upper Bush Street in Street Matigal in San Juan, landslide and tree continue to block the pathway and preventing crews from restoring the electricity, electricity supply to three affected customers. We expect that the tree clearing activities will continue over the next hour hours and that by the end of tonight, the three homes and the three customers will have their electricity supply return. In Cedar Grove Road in Mayaro, rising flood waters continue to impede uh, the Electricity Commission's um, efforts to restore electricity supply. And once those flood, flood waters recede, we expect that the impacted customers at Cedar Grove in Mayaro will have um, a return to their electricity supply. In Kanapo Road, Kanapo Southern Main Road, Again, this area is impacted by flood waters, and as soon as the water and it is safe for the crew to venture, they will go back to the location to restore electricity supply. Upper village in Blanchichelles, a number, approximately 10 customers, are yet to receive their electricity supply. Um, there, there have been some difficulties in accessing the, this particular area in the community as a result of landslip. However, the Commission has advised that once restoration work is completed to ensure that access can be made to these, these homes, the Commission 
and its crew will return to the community to ensure that the 10 affected customers will have their electricity supply. In Tobago, um, we have no reports of um, electricity disruption and we continue to thank and to appreciate the hard work of the men and women in Tobago for restoring normalcy to the electricity grid. So <clears throat> just to recap, once the floodwaters impacting some communities recede, the Electricity Commission and their crewmen will continue to work towards ensuring that the impacted communities and customers will have a restoration of their electricity supply. Over the next 24 hours, the three water treatment plants that are yet to put back into operation for various reasons, we expect over the next 24 hours those three water treatment plants will be brought back into full operation and over the next 24 to 48 hours a stabilization of the water distribution grid in northeast Trinidad, northwest Trinidad and we expect that customers will have access to clean portable water to undertake their um, clean up, cleaning up operation. Just to remind again that the World Meteorological Office in collaboration with our partners in the region and the Trinidad and Tobago Meteorological Services Division, we continue to monitor this very unique weather condition affecting not only us in Trinidad and Tobago and in the region but all over the world. We expect to have unusually high periods of rains leading up to February 2023 and that means that we face the possibility of flooding over the next two to three months. We will continue to collaborate with our partners in the region and in the world so that all countries that are you know, facing the possibility of droughts and flood conditions that they will be appraised with the appropriate information so that action can be taken to ensure that we mitigate the impact of these harsh weather conditions that we are experiencing at this point in time. Thank you very much, Minister Gonzalez, for that comprehensive report for all the agencies under your responsibility, not just WASA, as I had initially said, as well as for giving us a global context for the weather that we are experiencing in Trinidad, understanding that this is a regional issue, it's a global issue. Um, we are now going to move to Minister, to Minister Sinanan, who will now give us a perspective from the Ministry of Works and Transport. Thank you, thank you, Minister. Um, from the Ministry of Works and Transport perspective, um, we have uh, restored connectivity throughout the, the country. You can now drive from uh, all the way to Matlot, there are some parts where it's single lane, obviously where we still have some rubble to move out. The, the, that's the Parrier Main Road, the North Coast Road, um, all the way to Blanchard Shares. All the roads are cleared, um, at least at some areas, for single lane traffic. Um, in terms of the, the, the flooding, however, there are certain areas that we do have some flood waters, and we still um, advise against traveling through the flood waters if you can avoid that. Um, the area that we have been tested with now is really the Bamboo 2 area. I just came from Bamboo 2 and I'll be going back to Bamboo 2 in a little while. Um, I, I, I actually went into Bamboo 2 last night uh, into this morning. That area is very challenged um, in terms of the level and the height of the water. What we found in Bamboo 2, there were three breaches. Two, it is alleged uh, the contractor who was doing the work there did some sort of tracking on, on the bank. Um, and one um, is alleged, again, is being investigated that a resident of the area cut the bank about 80 feet to allow recreational activities. That would have accounted for about 80% of the water now in bamboo. And because of the volume of water in bamboo, we had to shut the pumps down because the pumps actually went underwater. Um, and then it, it became impossible to pump. The challenge we have in bamboo, there's no way for the water to, 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 to come out of bamboo unless we pump. We do have some pumps on standby. Uh, once the water recedes, we will uh, put these additional pumps in place to get the water out. But it is a very dangerous 
uh, area now because we, you know, you still have water coming into bamboo, although at a lesser volume, um, especially at the point where the resident would have cut the bank. Um, that have really posed a challenge for us. We are now trying to carry in some sandbags to see if we could protect that 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 breach to ensure in case the river rise again, we could stop the amount of water coming in. Um, and that is really the area we are concentrating on. In the Lapai uh, area last night, I had to actually uh, go down there with a contractor because we were seeing a possibility of a breach on the Karani, which would have been a disaster in that area. A contractor came out, and I think they finished there about 3 o'clock this morning. I left them about 12 and then went into bamboo. But this is basically what we are doing. In certain areas where we feel there could be a potential problem, we are actually moving in immediately. Unfortunately, there are several areas that you can only address the problem when the water recedes. One of these areas is the Manzalina area. Um, but most of the, the infrastructure right now have been restored, um, but we still have to monitor the situations. Uh, again, I want to, 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 to play with the people of the, the Bamboo 2 area. Um, we have to be very careful in that area. I, as I said, I just walked the entire bank that was breached with, 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 with a team and some of the residents from the area, and we will be able to identify exactly where that water was coming from. Um, we are going to make some efforts to, to stabilize the area, but it is challenging because of the height of the water. Once the water recedes, again, immediate action will be taken while investigation goes on as to who really was responsible for these breaches on the bank. Um, having said that, I mean, we just have to be very careful. Our teams are out there. We are inspecting all the bridges. Uh, we have restored the, even the, the, the road going to, from Maracas to Las Cuevas. Um, it connectivity is there, so we do have connectivity around the island. As I said, the Manzalena Road remains closed, but you can use the alternative routes. There is some water on that on the on the road up there, but it is possible at this stage, especially for higher vehicles and and the lower vehicles are now channeling through the water. So again, I keep uh, saying that let us you know be our brothers keepers. This is a very challenging time for us, and there are people who will try to distract us from doing our work. And I just want to to say that nobody, nobody will distract this minister from what he has to do. And we will just ignore those who seem to want to use this opportunity to make themselves very popular. I, I understand there was somebody brain while I was going and doing my work in Bamboo. Unfortunately, I didn't hear him because I really was paying no attention to clungs on the road. So thank you. Thank you very much, Minister Sinanan. Let's move on to Minister Hines now, who will give us an update from the Ministry of National Security. Minister Hines. Thank you very much, Minister De Nobrega. Thank you very much, colleagues. Based on what we have heard this afternoon, I think the citizens of the Republic should take note of the fact that while the weather patterns seem to have improved, and we had less rain today, for the reasons already stated, the situation became in some ways exacerbated, heightened, and as a consequence of that, you will now see more engagement by the Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force, because as we indicated earlier in these briefings, it is when the regional corporations and the other agencies become overwhelmed, unable to treat with what is in front of them, then at the guiding hand, based on the coordinating responsibility of the ODPM of the Ministry of National Security, we will deploy our resources, bring them to bear on the situation, the Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force being one of them. In those circumstances, I must report that the Defense Force providing support on request from the Housing Development Corporation, the HDC, provided transport today for some of the residents of Rail Spring Valsain. As you would have heard before, that area was particularly hard hit by these events. The Defense Force deployed one troop carrier and two water assets with operators from the Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard 
in support of the work and the operations in that area. A troop carrier was also deployed to Mafeking to assist personnel from the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commi uh, Commission who had work to restore lost electricity, lost power in certain inundated areas in the Mafeking and, uh, and surrounding areas. And the Defense Force rallied to their call, made it possible for them to get out there to get that job done. Two water assets were also deployed in the bamboo area, as you heard Ministers Arawi and Minister Sinanan explain. There was a great need for that because that area is equally severely hit by the events. And as far as bamboo settlement was number two, two water assets were deployed there to assist in the operations. The engineer battalion, a particular very active, very mobile, very resourced element of the Defense Force is on high alert with a focus, a special focus, on bamboo settlement number two and bamboo settlement number three in, in anticipation of any heightened circumstances. Two field teams of members of the Defense Force were deployed in the bamboo area today to assist in the delivery of meals and water to the residents who needed it and as well as to carry out what they call reconnaissance. Um, that is to see where the difficulties are, see the potential for exacerbated problems and to raise them with their leaders and the ODPM to provide the necessary responses. It transpired that the Ministry of Health needed some support to urgently move some patients from the Mayaro District Health Facility to other care facilities of the Ministry of Health and the region and the, the health authorities, and that is and was coordinated by the ODPM as well. As I indicated earlier, Minister Rawi did a while ago very happily. Individuals, businesses. And NGOs on this occasion, Nanan's Bird Sanctuary Tours, provided one of their boats in support of the people in Bamboo Settlement and supported the work and the uh, operations today. And the Red Cross mobilized itself and provided meals to the people of Bamboo Settlement Number 2. And that is to be commended in this whole of society response to this whole of society problem. The Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, on the other hand, led by Senior Superintendent Meister, who leads the Traffic and Highway Patrol Division of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, recognizing that as a result of these floods, as a result of the inundation, as a result of water coming from the Karani, as you heard, coming on, particularly in the vicinity of the Karani overpass, they came out there. And in particular, we have several patrols out there along the Beetham Highway, uh, cycle patrols along the Churchill Roosevelt Highway, the Uriah Butler Highway, and the Caroney Overpass area that had this particular problem. Patrols are out there ensuring that the traffic moves uh, in so far as the <clears throat> Central Market area closer to Port of Spain. Patrols are out there regulating the traffic, getting them, getting it to flow as smoothly as is possible, and as well in the area of the maritime roundabout. And I can tell you uh, that um, the, the police have just reported, just before I began to speak here, that the water has started to recede, and as such, the two lanes on the highway have now become usable again, and the situation is progressing under the keen watch of the ODPM, as I said, that directing and guiding hand, deploying our resources from national security as we see fit and appropriate in the circumstances. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister Hines. Before we go to questions, I just want to go quickly to Minister Sinanon, who will also yeah. weigh in here. Yeah, I just want to add that we will be opening the bus route from 6 o'clock. 
Um, the reason why we have to use the time six o'clock because we have to make sure that the mass transportation and the, the population who use the bus route through mass transportation is allowed to actually leave Port of Spain. So from six o'clock, the bus route will be open all the way up to Arima. Thank you. Yes, Thank and you I, I have, if I may just say very quickly, and based on the in inclination, the, well, the, the suggestion from the Minister of Works, I communicated that to the police, and they are just about to give effect to that position. Forrest. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let's just put that all together, comprehensive update, so let's deal with it this way. High tide is at 8.41 p.m., so half past eight tonight, roughly, the tide is going to be high. The Kearney River burst its banks. We're down to one lane. There's gridlock traffic. That means the water inside of bamboo number three, bamboo number two, and those environs have nowhere, those waters have nowhere to go. Even if we could pump immediately, the river into which it's going to go is overflowing. So we expect significant uh, distress to continue at present. Whilst that is going on, we're going to place, uh, if possible, and again, I thank um, Imam Abdul um, uh, Hasib um, Aziz. I thank him for his personal intervention on to um, Nabi Road and on to the other areas, Mohan Road um, in Bamboo Number 2, because we got to see the site of two breaches, one of which is a resident, which created that for almost 70 to 80 feet. Putting it in simple terms, ladies and gentlemen, we have had 30 inches of rainfall over five days, more than 30 inches. That's three feet of water that has gone into the soil, into the rivers, and into the riverines, and now into people's homes. The Minister of Public Utilities just shared with me, but it's under embargo, that there will be a very significant worldwide bulletin released tomorrow on what can be expected in the months ahead. And this means that even though we are coming to the end of the technical hurricane season, we are going to be experiencing significant events go forward. That means usual predictive modeling of what happened in the past and how many years ago those things are going to be thrown out onto their ears at those points. I'd like to respectfully suggest um, that in a situation where you're dealing with disaster management, it makes sense to achieve a remedy as quickly as we can. We do assessment, we do cleanup and cooperation. I'd like to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that part of this involves a significant amount of reform work and what we're trying to do in the whole of government response to this is to put these resources, all of the disaster management that we're talking, actually resides in the local government arms. So you have first responders, fire, ambulance, police, etc. Your second response, the line that goes in and does the assistance, are the disaster management units in the regional corporations. We can confirm that those units are properly um, structured, they have supplies, etc. We've done our hubbing of resources at the racket center, and we also have at different locations materials, so sandbags and mattresses and cleaning supplies and food and different positions. Added on to that, beyond the first response and second response, obviously we then get into cleanup operations. But the local government reform is really intended to treat with that. Tomorrow we will know how the court rules on the injunction brought by the opposition to stop um, the term of councils continuing. That's a huge impact into where we go um, beyond December 3rd. So just bearing in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that there is a massive legal challenge in the courts. It was heard today without breaching the rules and the sub judice principles. Tomorrow we're going to have some news on that which will affect how we treat with where we are right now. So these are not small events. These are very significant events. Lastly, I'd just like to say to um, people who exercise their democratic rights robustly, I don't think that it is very um, helpful 
to be engaged in, uh, I'll use a technical term, level cussing, just for political purposes. Um, I can tell you that the members of parliament that all of us have been coordinating with, every last one of them, we've all been on the same page. I did a joint interview today at Bamboo Number no. 2 with the local government councillor for the area who belongs to the opposition. And um, I can tell you that we have been all on the same page. So let's please minimize fake news and again, just try to avoid the unprofitability of people that just seek to grab attention and create distraction. Please reach out to the Ministry of Social Development. Again, the website is www.social.gov.tt. Access the following in summary, emergency food support, $20,000, up to $20,000 in funding for minor house repair, $15,000 sanitary plumbing assistance, that's the upper limit, clothing grant up to $1,000 per person, school supplies for primary school up to $700, Secondary school, 1000 A replacement of household items up to a maximum of 10000 Counseling and psychological support. And then the Ministry of Community Development deals with self-help, which is a further form of government assistance. Our colleagues in the Ministry of Agriculture and in other ministries that coordinate, we're all working under the direct supervision of the Honourable Prime Minister, who has established our interministerial team to work and to report. I'll end before going to question time, subject to um, Simon's intervention, by expressing our profound gratitude to the hardworking people in the public service. Folks, at 3 a.m. this morning, TN Tech teams were assembled to go through 10 feet of water to my arrow. At yesterday's marker, go forward, Boats were moving up and down on what used to be roads. There are also many very hard-working community people. And again, we met a significant number of them in Bamboo Number no. 2 today, just as an example. But later on in Lavantil, in, 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 in other areas, in Kokorit, in San Fernando, in Mayaro, we met so many hard-working volunteers. There was a gentleman running a boat up and down in bamboo number two had been out since 6 a.m. the day before on his own dime as the Americans say out of his own pocket and to the many people that have been cooking meals and providing and servicing I just like to celebrate the the people of Trinidad and Tobago for the effort that they have done we the ministerial team respect the rights and democratic principles in this country we are here to serve and we certainly do expect to be put under challenge to perform better and to work harder and we look forward to your feed in and your feedback so that you can point us in the directions that you wish us to move not all things are immediately possible sometimes we have to phase them so thank you simon for for that last intervention thanks a lot Faris. let's move into questions from media who have joined us and continue to join as always uh, we utilize the hand up if you have a question to ask Please state your name and your media house, and um, you have two questions, and we will try to do one round, and then if we have time permits, we will go back again. So please, mem members of the media, please feel free to raise your hands, those of you who have questions for us. We'll start with Jewel Brown. Jewel? Jewel Brown. Jewel, I don't know, we are not hearing you. Any other members of, of the media have questions while we wait on Jewel? Let's go to Sunil Lala. <laughs> Yes, hi, good afternoon, Sonal Lala, TTP News. Um, Minister, in terms of the, the alleged um, embankment, uh, the breach of the embankment, what can be done, if any, uh, to the alleged resident um, if and when found? And secondly, for me, I note a uh, media report, I'm not sure if it's true, 
but apparently the um, it, um, almost a three lanes of the highway now uh, is being affected by water. Any plans to, to possibly divert one of the the um, northbound lanes to go south? So in terms of the, the highway, the police is out there, and we, we actually taking guidance from the police because once you convert a lane, then you have to actually have uh, police manning the, the, the out of there. So we, we are the ministry. We are, we are willing to, to take the advice from the police, uh, but uh, the last information I had is that the water was receding. So we actually had one lane on either side closed off. There were still two lanes operating. Um, if the water is receding, then there may not be any... Um, decision to do that. However, we do take guidance from the police because they have to manage the situation. Uh, in terms of the the breach, as I said, this is being investigated as we speak. Um, I led the team to go into the, the affected area. We had to take the boat and go down to the end and then we had to to, to walk on the, 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 the bank where it was breached. So I did see it for myself. It was breached and it was confirmed by many of the residents, the individuals who did it. I understand that it is not just, just they actually run vehicles up and down uh, the bank for recreational and, you know, for their personal reasons. Um, it is something that we have to deal with. It is posing a major challenge for us because if the information coming in is, is, is clear that we may have some rise in the river levels again, um, that area will continue to pour water into bamboo. There are two other areas which we feel we can deal with with sandbags. That area, however, it's a major. It's about 80 feet that they would have cut the bank um, to give access to vehicles. That is really what they, they, we're facing with, with there. But I am sure if we can, you know, have the, the, the footing to take action, then that, that will be referred again to the, the, the Attorney General's office. Thank you. So the just just to add on to the the there are several agencies that will have interaction on the river embankment um, interference. That'll be the Commission of State Lands. There will be aspects of the Drainage Division, and there'll be aspects in rural development and local government. As we indicated earlier, we intend to take aggressive action on these matters. Um, I can tell you that I was not aware of the um, embankment. Um, breach by residents in the neighborhood until I was informed of that. And part of that information to make sure it percolates upward as quickly as possible is what we're going to make sure is done on that end. But we certainly do intend to take aggressive action on it. Thank you very much. Let's try Jewel again. Jewel, are you with us? Nothing from Jewel. Uh, Shane Superville, I saw your hand up a little earlier. Do you have any questions for the panel? Hi, good afternoon. Shane Superville from the Newsday newspaper. I would ask Minister Sinanan just to repeat. I think he broke up a few times while he was responding to Sunil from TTT with respect to reports of a blockage on this southbound lane of the Uriah Butler Highway if any advisory is being put out in relation to that. Well, okay, the police are on site at, at that area. We are taking our uh, instructions from the police. If the police decides that they want to open a uh, lane on the opposite side, then we will facilitate that. But we act, the, the last information I had is that the water was receding. If that happens, then we, there's no need for that. But we, are, we await uh, directions from the police who are the ones who are really manning the traffic down there to tell us, you know, what they want to do, if they feel we should do it. But we, we, we are on hand to, to take that direction from the police and facilitate whatever they want happen there. We, uh, we collaborated with them on the bus route, and a decision was taken to open the bus route from 6 o'clock. And why 6 o'clock? It allows all the maxi taxis and the PTSC buses with the mass transit out of Port of Spain to get out of the way, and then we can allow the cars to, to utilize the bus route. Shane, any more? Any other questions? You're allowed to at this point. No, that's all from the other side. Any other questions from, from the media present?
So I've just I've just received a, a message. Uh, apparently, Jewel is, is having some audio problems. He has he has sent a question, however, to the panel just to ask if the nation is still under a national alert. So if anyone on the panel wants to take that. Um, no, yeah, <laughs> that's a yes and no, right? Yes. So we are under Riverine alert number four. So we're at orange level there. The sky is above us, that's back to green. So yes, we're under national alert in effect because the Met Office has kept us under orange alert level and that is serious risk and damage. So yes, we are. And as you realize, this affects everybody. So even though um, we may have flooding in Mayaro, Manzanilla and Bamboo number two, um, the Kyrene River is overflowing and therefore the entire nation is in gridlock traffic. Um, whilst that water is subsiding, we're awaiting the on-the-site um, information as to what should happen and we're taking directions that way. Opening the highway is not that simple because the opposite lane would have to be manned and you have to make sure that you don't have a tragedy whilst that is not being, if that is an unmanned opening. So we're taking directions on that level. Yes, we're still under alert. Shane, I see your hand up if you want to take that question, if you want to ask your question. Hi, good afternoon again, everyone. Uh, this question is from Minister Gonzalez. Just in relation to the earlier question I had with respect to reports of a blockage on the southbound lane of the Uriah Butler Highway, there is a text message, an SMS message being circulated on WhatsApp, which is purporting to be from the Ministry of Public Utilities. Just wanted to know if you were aware of that or if it's a legitimate or a valid message as far as you understand. Um, Shane, I have not seen the text message, but what I do know is that um, TSTT was asked to issue the appropriate bulletin with respect to the um, the situation on the Karani River and the traffic gridlock that we we are currently experiencing in Port of Spain and other parts of the country. So TSTT is an agency under the Ministry of Public Utilities, and I will not be surprised if that text message would have emanated from that sister utility agency. Um, we just received Jewel Brown's second question, which was a question as to, um, and I'll put it on the record for him, it was asking when we will hear directly from the Prime Minister. We have been assembled, us ministers, by the Prime Minister. Um, he has put us to have these co press conferences uh, it is by his direction. We are in direct contact with him on a continuous basis as we are with each other. And therefore, the Prime Minister has put the system to work. Um, he expects us to carry out our jobs and to um, report as we are doing. And these instructions come directly from the Prime Minister. So you have seen the effect of his instruction at work. And um, we are certainly carrying that out with diligence. Thank you very much, Faris. I'm not seeing any more hands up from the media panel. Uh, does anyone have any other questions? I will have to assume that there are no further questions. Um, they have, there having been no further questions, uh, we will bring the press conference to an end, I just want to reiterate some of the messages that we would have heard here today. All the arms of the state are working together to bring relief, to manage the conditions that we currently find ourselves under in the country. The Minister of Public Utilities has given us a global perspective as well for us to understand that this is not only a Trinidad and Tobago issue, but a regional and international one. Uh, we are now seeing our the ministries of social development as well as the ministry of sport and community development also coming in to take us into the next phase after addressing the issue after we get through cleanup ensuring that those who are in need of assistance can get it uh, i ask that you continue to follow the uh, the correct platforms for this sort of information the ministry of communication social media platforms uh the Ministry of Rural Development, the Ministry of Social Development at www.social.gov.tt. 
uh, reach out to your local government councillors, reach out to your MPs, reach out to agencies like social development, like ministries like social development, and agencies like the Self Help Commission to seek assistance and to get that assistance. I want to thank all the members of the media who have joined us to assist in getting this information into the public domain. I again want to thank the ministers who have taken the time to come here from the field, and I am sure we'll be going back out into the field as well. Uh, I want to thank you for your time here for answering the questions, and we repeat it, please be your brother's keeper. Look out for the aged, for the infirmed, for the sick, for those who need your assistance in the community to ensure that all of us get through this together. Thank you very much, and we will be coming back to you as is needed. Thank you.